Hello and welcome to another edition of TTF Reads. Today we read an article called Reflection is at the Heart of Practice written by Simon Hall and Grace Hall McKinty. It is taken from a book called Readings in Education. Now this article has a very interesting format. Here the authors explain the steps of the guided reflection protocol interspersed with actual samples of reflection by a teacher. The actual samples of reflection will be read by my colleague Kritika and I, Sandhya, will be reading the explanations by the author. So here goes, reflection is at the heart of practice. The life force of teaching practice is thinking and wondering. We carry home those moments of the day that touch us and we question decisions made. During these times of reflection, we realize when something needs to change. A protocol or guide enables teachers to refine the process of reflection alone or with colleagues. The guided reflection protocol is useful for teachers who choose to reflect alone. The first step in guided reflection is to collect possible episodes for reflection. Simon's reflection, the geese and the blinds, exemplifies this use of an ordinary event. Here goes step one, what happened? Answering the question what happened is more difficult than it sounds. We all have a tendency to jump into an interpretive or a judgmental mode, but it is important to begin by simply telling the story. Here is what happened in Simon's class on Wednesday, September 24 at 9.30 a.m. I stand to one side of the classroom, taking the morning attendance. One student glances out the window and sees a dozen geese grazing on the playground. Hopping from his seat, he calls out as he heads to the window for a better view. Within moments, six students cluster around the window. Others start from their seats to join them. I call for attention and ask them to return to their desks. When none of the students respond, I walk to the window and lower the blinds. Writing down what happened without analysis or judgment aids in creating a brief narrative. Only then are we ready to move to the second step. Step 2. Why did it happen? Attempting to understand why an event happened the way it did is the beginning of reflection. We must search the context within which the event occurred for explanations. Simon reflects. It's not hard to imagine why the students reacted to the geese as they did. As nine-year-olds, they are incredibly curious about their world. Explaining my reaction is more difficult. Even as I was lowering the blinds, I was kicking myself. Here was a natural opportunity to explore the students' interests. Had I stood at the window with them for five minutes, asking questions to see what they knew about geese, or even just listening to them, I'd be telling a story about seizing the moment or taking advantage of a learning opportunity. I knew that even as I lowered the blinds. So why? Why did I lower the blinds? Searching deeper, we may find that a specific event serves as an example of a more general category of events. We need to consider the underlying structures within the school that may be a part of the event and examine deeply held values. As we search, we often find more questions than answers. Simon continues reflecting. Two key things stand out concerning that morning. First, the schedule. On Wednesdays, I get only half an hour with these set of students. Second, this is the most challenging class I have had in 22 years of teaching. The first three weeks of school had been a constant struggle as I tried strategy after strategy to hold their attention long enough to have a discussion, give directions or conduct a lesson. There's something satisfying about answering the question, why did it happen? Reflection often stops here. If the goal is to become a reflective practitioner, 
However, we need to look more deeply. The search for meaning is step three. Step three, what might it mean? Assigning meaning to the ordinary episodes that make up our days can feel like overkill. Is there really meaning behind all those events? Wouldn't it be more productive to wait for something extraordinary to happen, an event marked with a sign, pay attention, something important is happening? Guided reflection is a way to find meaning within the mundane. Simon reflects, like a football quarterback, I often make bad decisions because of pressure. Unlike a quarterback, I don't have an offensive line to blame for letting the pressure get to me. While it would be nice to believe that I could somehow make the pressure go away, the fact is that it will always be with me. Being a teacher means learning to live within that pressure, learning from the decisions I make and learning to make better decisions. The search for meaning is an integral part of being human. But understanding by itself doesn't create changes in classroom practice. The last phase of guided reflection is more action oriented and involves holding our practice to the light of those new understandings. Step 4. What are the implications for my practice? Cultivating deep reflection through the use of a Cultivating deep reflection through the use of a guiding protocol is an entry into rethinking and changing practice. Simon reflects, My reaction to the pressure this year has been to resort to methods of control. I seem to be forever pulling down the blinds. I'm thinking about how I might better deal with the pressure. But there is something else that needs attention. Where is the pressure coming from? I am sensing from administration and parents that they feel I should be doing things differently. Maybe they are right. What I have been doing hasn't exactly been a spectacular success. But I think that what is causing the lowering of the blind stems from my not trusting enough in the process. Controlling the class in a fairly traditional sense isn't going to work in the long run. Establishing a process that allows the class to control itself will help keep the blinds up. Through the process, we gain new insights into the implications of ordinary events as Simon did when he analyzed the geese and the blinds. So Kritika, we see Simon's reflection uh, of his classroom teaching through this geese and the blinds. What insights did you get from this reading? I realized that a small seeming event can also provide um, a lot of material or lots of thoughts can lead to reflection. So as he said, guiding reflection, guided reflection is a way to find meaning within the mundane. I think I particularly like the fact that these steps, these questions guide thinking itself. We often tell teachers to reflect, but how to reflect is, uh, is, is the question in itself. So uh, just to summarize the, the five steps of the guided reading protocol for individual reflection, they are step one, collect stories. Step two, think of what happened or record what happened. Step three, think of think why it happened, why did it happen. Step four is to reflect what might it mean. And step five is to analyze what the impli what the implications are for classroom practice. So in this article the authors talk about uh, different kinds of reflection protocols. The guided reflection is for use by individuals. Whereas if you want to reflect as a team with, with your colleagues, then the critical incidence protocol is what they suggest. And this is something that we will go through in detail, we will read in our next edition of TTF Reads. So thank you for tuning into this podcast. Stay tuned for our next edition. Thank you. Thank you.